<sighs> so, merry meet and happy world goth day, everyone. I really wish I had something prepared for this video, but again, it's another early vlog because I work later and I'm probably gonna sleep. So, I really wanted to do something on the fact that it was World Cup thing. Um, and maybe tonight I can kind of put something together, I don't know, but for now I'm vlogging because I am vlogging every day this month. So, um, yeah, I don't look very goth-ish right now. I kind of look more like it yesterday, but as I said, I am going to work today, and I don't feel like looking the part or whatever else um, just to get undressed and everything. Believe me, I'd really, really get into it today if I could, but unfortunately, it is a full work day, which kind of sucks. Um, so, I made a video, like, a while ago, not like a while, a while ago, but, um, like a month or so ago, maybe around that time, um, about my opinion on the subculture. And, uh, you know, I kind of mentioned how, how I found out about it, sort of. I mean, of course, there's the stereotypes on TV and, and other stuff, which that kind of is what interested me. And to be honest, as some other YouTubers have said, um, the stereotypes kind of make up the subculture. That's why they exist. Um, you know, like... The stereotypes have to be kind of true to some degree. It's kind of what unites everyone that um, the similar interests, you know, and liking, you know, in, yeah, liking the same things. Um, sorry for saying um a lot, but like I said, it's early. So, I never got into it until recently. Well, I was into it. I had an interest in it, but I didn't do more of the in-depth research that I am doing now. I started that maybe two years ago. I didn't because where I had lived before, I was around this person that kind of, as I mentioned before, controlled a lot of things. And anything that I had of interest had to have come from him. Even if he got it from somebody else, he was supposed to be the original source. And so I just kind of, I just kind of let it go for a while. Especially, you know... The little research that I did do, or that I was able to get a hold of at the time, didn't match up to anything he was saying. Um, he was a little bit over-stereotypical about the subculture. And he had, he never showed or mentioned any real, um, thing about knowing the true origins of it. It was just black rock music that was it and there's so much more uh to it you know it is an actual subculture it does have an actual history it's kind of hard to track um you know like i said that's also been mentioned before by other people there are bands uh that you know, are considered original goth bands, and some of the bands themselves don't consider them, like, goth or whatever. Um, a lot of it's punk, post-punk, stuff like that. But a lot of it is what helped kick off 
uh, the music and the subculture. And one of the reasons I love subculture is, you know, I'm a little bit more into the uh, spooky kind of things to some degree. I don't think that, you know, cops or the spooky kids don't have their fears. Oh my god, yeah, they do have their phobias. Oh, definitely. There are some that I've heard, um, again, on YouTube, because there's a lot of great goth YouTubers, um, that really just don't like horror movies. I, myself, enjoy them. If they're done good, I don't like overly gory things. Um, I like a little bit more of things that you can make scary uh, without a lot of gore. And my stomach just can't handle that. Um, yeah, when it becomes too much, I can't, I can't watch it. But, you know, there are the good, you know, other creepy stuff, especially your ghost stories. Uh, Japanese people make some scary ass shit. And then, of course, there's the music. Um, I, of course, started out with your basic Evanescence rock music, moved on to some more metal type things, Lacuna Coil, Nightwish, stuff like that. Um, what else? And you don't have to just like that kind of music either. You can, you can like fucking rap music and be got, okay? So I'll just get that out of the way. But, a big part, almost the main part, of the subculture did start from my type of music. And there is a such thing as death rock, post-punk, or nowadays known as gothic rock. So it is its own, it is its own subgenre of rock or metal, whatever you want to call it. So you have, like I said, your spooky horror movies, and not just the horror movies, you have your, uh, just your odd spooky type uh, movies in general, even cartoons, you know, you obviously have almost any Tim Burton movie. You get your Nightmare Before Christmas, Corpse Bride, uh, other stuff. You know, creepy, kind of cutesy comedy things, too. So that's pretty big. It doesn't always have to be direct uh, horror. And then you have your gothic campy based TV show, The Monsters. Animal Family, some newer stuff, but the newer stuff, it seems more gothic-based characters within TV shows. Or there's, like, again, cute, spooky-themed stuff. Uh, Grim Adventures of Billy and Mandy haven't been on for a while, but that was one. Um... Of course, you had your goosebumps, your courage, your cowardly dog. You know, all that stuff has that, you know, gothy, spooky kind of element. And getting into books, I just got a whole bunch of goosebump books from a thrift store, and I was like, yay! So, again, literature is a big thing. Of course, there's a difference between gothic literature and just pure horror or scary, but it all kind of fits into it. You know, you only get your goosebumps or whatever by R.L. Stein. Of course, Stephen King and Rice is a major one, maybe even more than he is because of the whole vampire thing. Um, you have your classic literature. Uh, 
a definite bean Frankenstein, which I have to finish, but so far has been an excellent book. Um, yeah, so the literature is a big one, especially the older gothic ones. Um, of course, I am talking about the gothic subculture, but like I said, Dracula, Frankenstein, that kind of stuff. Uh, vampires, you know, Interview of the Vampire, Queen of the Dam. Like I said, those are the main ones. And of course, you have your creepy other things. Your interest in the supernatural, you know, ghosts and spiders and uh, zombies and vampires and all that stuff. And there are so many different uh, sub-genres within the subculture. Don't think it's all the same. I take, for the most part, a cross between not trend goth really sometimes I really do feel like just being kind of uh, poetic and you know artsy and stuff uh, going back to literature Poe would definitely be another one uh, the Raven is probably my favorite poem, and like I said, sometimes I want to be stereotypical, dark, poet kind of freaking looking thing, but I will often pair it with something more cute. Like, I went to a bar slash club, whatever you want to call it, in a long black dress that had buttons on it, it had... What was it? A button that said, not all witches live in Salem. I think I had a picture of a button with a picture of Tori Amos on it. And it was this, just this long, black, kind of stretchy material, plain dress that I got from a thrift store. And I carried a Stitch backpack on me. You know, Stitch from Lilo and Stitch? So, mine's kind of a cross between, like, dark, goth, goth. And, uh, cutesy, candy, bubble, goth kind of thing. So, yeah, I do like it because, of course, there are, like I said, there are the stereotypes that unite it, but it also has room for individuality. Uh, so, I hope you enjoyed this vlog. Hope it didn't bore you. See ya, everyone.